morning. Hello. Given my tardiness, I could almost say good afternoon. Goodness me, that was a close run thing. Get to three minutes to eight and have to reboot because OBS isn't playing nice. Well, at least you found that out before two minutes to eight. Uh, yes. Eight. How are you, Maddie? I'm okay, a little bit hungover, but not so bad. Oh, that sounds like you probably had a good night last night, then. <laughs> uh, yeah, not too bad. See, I wake up every day feeling hungover. <laughs> it doesn't involve alcohol. I wake up most mornings feeling like I've been beaten with a sack of doorknobs. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Dark elves. Dark elves with shooty things. That's what we what we did last week. Hmm. Uh, so today's catastrophe. I can't even think straight. Today's catastrophe is some barbarians. You don't normally associate elves and barbarians. No. They're not so, really like, associated, cool. only in the order of things to do. <laughs> I have a certain certain schedule for blog posts, and I need miniatures painted for pictures for the blog posts, and barbarians are coming up very quickly. Uh. And if anybody was paying attention, Dark Elves happened last weekend. I was paying attention. Hmm. I better clear some space. So this is what I was doing last night. Probably can't see that on the detail cam. You might see it on the wide version. Um, oh, man, man. Yeah, Twitch just spazzed out for a second. I see you're peeling tape off something. Hmm. <laughs> Ta da! That's a roof. A roof. Mm -hmm. now this came as a part of the Napoleonic starter set, so I bought last week so I was doing a little bit of research because I'm doing buildings for Demon World as well so mm -hmm. it's, it's very pretty there isn't too much detail on it um, there's enough detail on it that it does the whole MTF curl <sighs> it's a it's an interesting problem because you, you know you've got sides like this they're they're long and they're thin. Well, the the roof panels are an even better example. They're long and they're thin, and they've got a lot of detail cuts in them. So because you end up with relief cuts on one side and a solid on the other side, they go like a banana because they go towards the relief cut. Mm. So which is why it was taped down. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Uh, I suppose it wouldn't work if you did detail on both sides. No. Your registration is... It's end up right through. Yeah, well, no, because you can tune the, the laser cutter not to do that. But registration issues are a big problem. 
you know, if you're trying to get something down to a fraction of a millimeter, you'd want to have a very, very good indexing system. And even then, you know, depending on the quality of your laser cutter, you end up with step loss on the stepper motors and, you know, you end up with a couple of steps out and things just don't work anymore. Fair enough. Oh boy. I can put that away. Yeah, well, you we drained that one fairly quickly. No, no. It looked like it went down for savouring. <laughs> no, there's still there's still two thirds of the can there. It was the knife I was putting away. So uh, I have boy. a question. Hmm. Questions. If you're a self respecting barbarian, yeah. what colour would your pants be? Hmm. Uh, tired old Deadpool joke about wearing the brown pants, and that guy knows why. Leather it is. <laughs> Shout out to it, Ryan Reynolds if you're watching. <laughs> well, he's a pretty cool guy, you might be. Uh, you never know. Stranger things have happened. Oh. Shout out to Jason Momoa. <laughs> Who's, who may have just finished watching Don's live stream. Yeah. Can't blame him for that either. Well, absolutely not. He's certainly been encouraged to enough over the last few months. Um, yeah. Just because I want to be self-indulgent... I'll show some of the other stuff that I painted. Because I have to go to the right cabinet now, because I've moved everything. Yeah, well, you can't really show off your new cabinet shelves on stream, can you? No. Unless you're just going to ruin your setup. No, I can't do that, sadly. Right. Maybe next free donor you can, we'll have a walk around Dan's miniature cabinets. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Walk around the studio, in quotes. So, I've been down uh, most of the week, pretty low. Um, and so I took a break and I painted something else. So, here's my Shazvasti. And I've only just noticed now that the matte coat on this guy hasn't dried matte either. I had real trouble with this guy ending up with a, a more glossy than not surface. And both of them are the same. So I wonder if I've got a dud can or if there was something wrong with the atmospheric conditions when I was painting them. But I had thought I was struggling through my um, Infinity collection. Now, I have a lot of Infinity, and that's probably understating it somewhat, because I'm a little bit sort of... out of control, maybe, when it comes to that. I would have put it like, you like Infinity. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. Where I'm sitting, I can see in the uh, in the range of forty boxes, and that's not the stuff I've already unpacked and put in drawers. So it it's it's a bit of an obsession, and it's a bit out of control. Anyhow, um, when I was shuffling everything around, putting the new shelves in the cabinets. I did a quick count of how many infinity miniatures I've painted. I'm up over 50, so better than I thought it was. So are they a 28 or a 32? They're a 28. Okay. And they're a fine 28. 
Mm, um, they are extremely detailed. But but they're a uh, well. You know the difference between fine twenty eight and heroic twenty eight. Oh, uh, heroic twenty eight is thirty two. Sort of, but it's more that the proportions are heroic, right? Ye oldie, right. ye, ye oldie space marine versus a chess vasty, and you can see, you know, the height is right, but you know the the terminator is about eight feet wide. Yeah, gotcha. So the the their heads and legs and, and everything are really bulky. Chunky. Chunky. Um, Which fits with the lore of the space marines in general. And absolutely. Especially. But these Terminators are not the Primaris Terminators. So they yeah, whacked I've an extra foot on those. those. <laughs> yeah, um, well, that's because they wanted to bump the whole thing up to 32 for some reason. Yeah. So that they could sell more miniatures. Yeah. That's it. So, I'm very pleased with how the cabinets came out. I did manage to get them finished last night. Um, I've gone from 16 shells to 33 shells. Everything that is painted is now in them. Which means I have a little bit more room in my black cabinets for partially done projects. Which is a good thing. <laughs> the nice painted things go in the white cabinets. Mm. The unnice, unpainted things go in the black cabinets. That's right. There's, <laughs> There's a binary joke in there somewhere. There is, absolutely. Um, there is another cabinet in the room that currently contains a couple of ship models and some Lego cars and uh, the bottom shelf of that is the Shelf of Shame, which is the, the huge stuff that's assembled that isn't painted yet but is too damn big to go in any kind of cabinet other than a display cabinet shelf. Things like mm, Bane Blades, Lehman Russes. Well, like yeah, those are reasonable sized. Yeah. Uh, the Lehman Russes will go in the black cabinet. They're, they're not that big. Like, I've actually got a towel. Um, Skyray? What's the, what's the alternate build to the Skyray? The Hammerhead. I've got a towel Hammerhead in one of the drawers. So, you know, some of them do have a fair capacity. I want to start yeah, that I... army at some point, like start painting it. And I've got a, probably an entire a recon force assembled, just none of it's painted. Well, it was an interesting Torb exercise. On some... Go on, sorry. Well, Torb on some contrast paints, and away you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, a lot of airbrushing is going to get involved in that, just to do it quickly. Mm. Well, at least that's an option available to you. Mm -hmm. For me, getting these spray cans of matte varnish is just the line. What happened with that? The varnish? Hmm. Oh, I got a text message from Officeworks at about five o'clock yesterday. Yeah. Went up about six, B, six BST. But right. Saying, come pick it up at the store. It's ready for collection. Yeah. I'm thinking, hmm, when the hell am I going to get time to do it? I had time to do it. It was noon today. Yeah. Today, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I was extremely busy yesterday and... I really only had a brief window of time. And I'm going to be pretty busy today too, probably. Unless I um, bugger off right after this stream. Which I mm. suppose I could. Yeah, it's a... 
it, it, you're describing something that I remember from, you know, past lives when not having personal transport meant either slogging around on public transport or riding a bicycle places. So I don't know what you're talking about. It's just, it's been a long time ago. Tend to forget when you've got five different vehicles at your disposal that yeah. other people struggle to get around. Yeah, look, for me, it's not going to be that bad. I mean, I can even save myself a 20 minute walk. There's a, uh... There'll be a bus that comes along at the top of my street at uh, uh, 56 minutes after this stream is scheduled to finish. There you go. So that'll be time to put on, I don't know. Pants. Clothes. I'm wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> Might even put on leather pants. <laughs> you the barbarian, you. Yeah, well, I'm... Just as an open secret, I'm not a great one for wearing shirts. Right. Yeah, so... Uh, so, so hang on. No, does, does that involve bare chest or does it involve t-shirts? Bare chest. Right, okay. Like, I would go around in public with, you know, stripped to the waist if it was socially acceptable. Right. Despite the fact that I'm a BFF. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, living in Queensland, you don't really need anything on your torso. No. I understand, you know, clothing as something for warm weather. Uh, for cold weather, too. <laughs> yes, I'm a little bit hungover. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a question. Mm -hmm. these, these ones aren't wearing pants. They're wearing... Kilts? Well, it's a... It's a what looks like it, a robe. It's more, it's more than a loincloth. It is, and no, it's a complete robe, but there's a sash on the robe. Toga. Uh, yeah, maybe. So, if you're a self-respecting <laughs> barbarian wearing a toga, is that an oxymoron? Um, yeah, um, Roman barbarians wearing togas. Yeah. Wait, no, that no. was Caligula's palace. <laughs> what colour would your toga be? <laughs> um, some of the, what's the names, Thanes that I painted hmm. were like that. And I decided that the chest and the sash were one thing, and then everything at the waist and below was a kilt. Right. So I painted them separate colours from at, at the waist. Right. Because the sash is often worn with a kilt and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And they are heavily, heavily Celtic inspired, those ones. Yeah. Well, these are fine. Yeah, I thought Obviously. Um, I mean, there are human barbarians in other armies. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to... Other well, current armies. I'm going to go in a slightly different direction. Not that I disagree with you. I just... Well, um, yeah, I mean, you're entitled. Being artistically to... difficult, or different, or both. White togas with purple sashes. Yeah. Do you know what? <laughs> I've absolutely overdone the purple of late. Even Joe, right. even so, Joe noted, she said, you're painting a lot of things purple lately. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, you're sick of yellow. <laughs> She's sick of yellow. Yeah, that's what I... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it was that it was like y yes dear I'm trying to impress you so that you take some notice of what I'm doing not sure how well that went down never mind well you know women are hard to impress sometimes particularly when they're uh, putting up with you <laughs> She puts up with For an awful lot of period. bullshit. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to say that exactly. But yeah. Having having I to live with that. me in down weeks where I'm just bouncing along the bloody ground on the bottom, you know, tripping over my bottom lip most of the time, 
no, no, that's no fun. It's just no fun at all. It's no fun for me. It can't possibly be fun for anybody else. Hmm. Brisbane City Public Transport is now marketing itself in pink. Oh, really? Hmm. All of the signage and logos and website are now pink. Mm. Uh, with extremely female and, you know, public servant female, not attractive female. <laughs> uh, sorts of characters all over the place. Right. Half your ridership is male. That's not a good way to appeal to them. I suppose this might be a way to attract women to public transport instead of driving. Possibly. I'm going to have to put a disclaimer on this one too, aren't I? <sighs> Probably. Probably. It's alright. Translink.com.au. Check it out for yourself. Mm. Tell us what you think. Make your own minds up. Don't be guided by our particular prejudices. I just thought it might be a one-off thing, like there was some kind of special, I don't know, event, International Year of the Woman or something like that, that they decided to change the colours for. But no, they're changing the colour of everything. Right. I think, in you know, in the fairness of diversity that there are probably a fair number of females out there who don't like that shade of pink. It's a very, very girly pink. Yeah. Well, you know. And you're right. There are a lot out there who don't. There's girls and there are girls. I, um. Well, even, you know, feminine girls as well. Some just don't like pink. Mm Mm-hmm. And being of a, a motorcycling persuasion I don't know a lot of the females in the motorcycling world don't um, there are some that do like getting getting motorcycles wrapped in hot pink is a thing but mm. um, beautiful thing about a wrap is is that it doesn't destroy the surface underneath it so if you get sick of it you can just take the wrap off and put another one on Not don't a bad like, idea. Don't like the colour of your bike? Put a wrap on it. Whereas I was daft enough to repaint one. So. And then you got sick of it? Oh, no, I'm not sick of it. It's a theme. It's got storm clouds and lightning bolts on it. That sounds cool. And a number plate of Tempest. And no badging, so you can't tell what brand it is. <laughs> uh, not that anybody cares. 20-year-old bike. I care. Looks good. Did you paint it yourself? Though? I did. Well, there you go. I stripped it back to bare metal. Um, bought Chinese fairings because I couldn't afford Kawasaki fairings. Um, no, no, literally, there was a fourfold price difference. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. Yeah. In fact, it might have been, even been fivefold. Anyhow, so a cheap set of Chinese fairings. Um, I have all of the originals, they're just not in very good shape. The bike had had a couple of accidents. And, um, Oh, what a drama that was, because I, I buffed them to, to put a key on the surface. So, you know, they had a clear coat over the top. Of, they were painted black, they had a clear coat over the top, and I buffed that back so that I could get a key so that, you know. And um, I, I sprayed them the black that I wanted because I needed to spray a tank and a few other things, and I wanted it colour matched, and they were slightly different blacks. And the black fried up like eggs on a griddle because there was there was a chemical reaction between something underneath the clear coat and the paint that I was using, and it just went the whole thing went crazy paving. And I you know I took a panel down to the 
paint shop and I said, what on earth? And he's looking at that, scratching his head going, yeah, there's something underneath the clear coat that this paint that you're using doesn't like, so you're going to have to put a barrier on. So three coats of barrier, then two coats of undercoat. It's like... <sighs> it was a... It was a process. Still... Looks pretty good. Oh, I was just thinking you might have filled all those cracks in the paint with, you know, light blue ink wash. And oh yeah, um, the problem with it is, is that when 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 it went crazy paving, like it did, the surface did this. I figured. So I had to, I, I had to sand them back, like. Yeah, yeah. Four hundred grit back, then eight hundred grit, then barrier coat, then yeah, it was like I was expecting it to take me a week, and it took four. So that was the other thing. I didn't. It was winter. It was cold, and so I went yeah. down to Bunnings and I bought a couple of those twenty four hundred watt. Um, outdoor lamps. Yeah. Bought two of those so that I had, you know, heat going into the area. And you turn that on to warm all of the air up. In in and it was in the the workshop back in the house in Emerald, and get the workshop, you know, temperature up to twenty or twenty two degrees, and then spray, let all that cook off, and and dry and all that kind of stuff and then polish it back the next day but um the next power bill was really hilarious oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear mind you the power bills here aren't all that less funny i don't know what we're doing but we're using a heck of a lot of power you got one of those smart meters yeah there's your problem Right. It's not that smart. No. I remember when Vic Gov started rolling those out to everyone, seeing how much cheaper they would make your power bills ten years ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> they did a huge, huge campaign. Yeah. To convince people. And people made the switch, and then all of a sudden people were finding that their power was being turned off in the night by these so-called smart meters. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I do use a fair bit of power. I mean, laser cutters and 3D printers and... Or the exhaust. Oh, yeah. The, Plus the... lighting. I mean, good it's... God. 8,000 <laughs> fucking lumens. No, 14. Lighting. Come on. <laughs> 14,000 lumens of light. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it in fact 14? Eight. Sixteen. <laughs> That's 16 times 750. Uh, don't know. No, it's not, it's not 14,000, but... Yeah, it's 16 times 750 plus 1,000. It doesn't matter. It's a lot. 13,000. There you go, 13,000 lumens. I should have been able to work that out in my head quick enough, but hung over. Mm. I'm going to go for a saffron for these robes, just because I feel like getting up. <laughs> Back to the yellows. Back to the yellow, yeah. I, I think that would actually look pretty good. I, um... <laughs> I was 
guy, one of those little guys in the orange robes, just burst into flames. Um, I watched a Robin Williams special the other night. It was it was very very entertaining and deeply deeply distressing. He did the sad clown pretty well. What a magnificent individual! I didn't find out until the end that he was suffering from a degenerative disease that was taking everything off him. So. Yeah, well, Bruce Willis has recently hung up the boots. Yeah. So to speak. He's suffering from aphasia and he's finding it really, really hard. So he's just the other day said, you know what, no more movies. Right. Medical reasons, I just can't do it anymore. Mm. And Phil Collins has hung up the microphone, so... I didn't hear that. End of an era. Yeah, they played their last concert. Well. And Phil Collins uh, does not look well. So. Yeah. My first impression of Phil Collins came from South Park, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, That's right. the Phil Collins that I've always got in my mind, you know, yeah. despite him being an incredible, incredibly talented musician. Yeah. Decades of worth. Decades at the top. Really, you'd say yeah. three, probably. Yeah. Fully. Um, yeah, stupendously talented musician. I mean, he couldn't, can't read... Um, traditional sheet music made his own notations up. So. Uh, saffron. Every time I think of that word, I think Yo Safbridge. There's oh. a reference. No, I've heard that. I've heard that reference. I just can't remember what it's from. It's Firefly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, I remember now. Yeah. Yolanda, Saffron, yeah. Bridget. And Mal finally refers to it as Yosef Bridge. The last episode they encounter her in. Yeah. Yes, extremely attractive. You're going to a very special hell. She went on to bigger and better things and then disappeared. At least I think she disappeared. Not sure. Well, back to Canada. <laughs> Back to Canada. So, have you heard of a show called Heartland? Yes. Do you, do you want to know what I refer to Heartland as? Uh, that horsey show? No. Days of Our Horses. Well, yeah, it's pretty much that. I, I, see, Joe used to own and ride horses. That's what she mm. did as a young woman. And so she has an affinity for things horseish. Um,. So she's made you sit down and watch it all with Oh, her. no. She hasn't made me sit down and watch it all, but she certainly has sat down and watched it all. So I come in from time to time and I'm like, so uh, what are we on today? Is it Days of Our Horses, Days of Our Doctors, Days of Our Firemen? <laughs> Obviously, I'm not a very supporting partner, but I, it, it all just blurs to me. They're just... TV shows and hello, I did get sucked into Chicago Fire there for a little while. But moving on, so yeah, okay, Heartland, biggest Heartland. TV show ever produced by Canada. 
Mm. Mm. So which Andrea is a massive, massive fan of because okay. it's not what she got to do with her life, but it's what she wanted to do. It was her childhood dream. Right, to what, look after horses on a ranch. Basically, yeah. Yeah. And so she's. we've been watching it, mm -hmm. and I'm mostly watching it because there's all these Canadian actors that you never see in anything else. Right. Aside from Canadian shows. Right. And I'm like, I know you, I know you, I know you. I mean, one of the two main characters is <laughs> I recognised immediately from being Stargate. She was in two episodes of Stargate as a minor character. I'm like, I know you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know you from Stargate. Which well one, done. Which Canada. one was that? Atlantis. No, no, but but which which actress? Oh, uh, the brunette one. Right. The sister. Uh, something Morgan. What's her name? The one who plays, yeah, the older sister. Yeah. And she was very cute in Starcade. Uh, she's still pretty I mean, good looking in Heartland. Well, the show's still going, so it's been 15 years. Uh -huh. 15 years might add something to it, but yeah, good looking girl. Yeah. No... Uh, Joe's just finished watching the latest released season, or at least the latest released episodes of the current season, and she's um, not lost anything in that department, as far as I can tell. Well, that's good, then. Got something to look forward to. Why, what season are you watching? Two. <laughs> oh, boy, have you got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. Up to 16 or 17 or something. Yeah, next one's 16. <laughs> so yeah, I've probably seen three or four episodes of Outland. My constant question is, when will these characters grow up and stop being massive bitches to everyone? Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Oh, the grandfather character is pretty good too, though. Yeah, he's he's gold, and he, he stays gold and remains, you know, the the rock upon which the whole thing turns. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, Heartland. Mm hmm These things we do for women. Or the other way around. Mm-hmm. The uh, relationship goes that way. Yeah. I I view that as pretty harmless television, to be honest. Oh, it is. It's, it's very mindless entertainment. Inoffensive. And, yeah. Yeah. It's not Outlander. No. Ah, this war with Russia and Ukraine is doing my head in. Yes. See, all the world's greatest pirates are Russian. Right. And all these sanctions means they're not uh, pirating. Right. <laughs> so you're not getting your TV fixes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the hidden consequences the, the hidden consequences of an invasion by Russia <laughs> <laughs> of the western men's TV watching dries up just uh, about oh, that's hysterical I was standing in the shower this morning wondering because I haven't heard anything about it for days but yeah, well, watched the Channel 10 news last night because uh, one of the guys I was drinking with wanted to, you know, he was yelling at the TV, show us what's going on with the war. I need to know, blah, 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 blah. He, mm. he got really worked up about it. And they had one story for about two minutes. Mm. Um, 
and it was a retread of Zelensky talking to the Australian Parliament. Right. And he's like, seriously, what's going on in the war? And then he got angry and threw the remote across the room. And, right. Which is fine, because it was his house. Okay. I thought you were going to... The, the, the end of that story was when they chucked him out of the pub. No. No. No, the pubs don't show TV news. So basically, we don't know what's going on. I don't think we ever really knew what was going that, on. Over. That's a very good point. I recently learned that most of America's news footage on it is coming from a Department of Defense contractor. Right. Mm. And everybody else is getting their feeds directly off... Ukrainian cell phones. Yeah. And some of that's pretty fun too. Yeah, the problem with Blokes that is... Blokes with is RPGs that... yelling, welcome to Ukraine. And... Yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you... You and I will have very different YouTube habits, probably. Um, probably. I follow a guy who goes by the, the chosen moniker of the chieftain his name is nicholas moran he's a lieutenant colonel now i believe in the u.s military but his other job was as a consultant to wargaming.net the makers of world of tanks which is an interesting position to be in you know, you're in a, uh, a you're employed by a Russian gaming company at the same time as you're living in a country that's applying sanctions to the country that, whose company you work for. Anyhow, um, he provides a voice of reason, I believe, because he takes a very measured approach to these sorts of things. And he said, basically, um, TLDR was you don't really know what's going on. You know, I can recut this footage to show many, many different things. So if you see footage that purports mm. to be something, just be a little bit sceptical about it. Well, exactly right. You can do amazing things with a computer these days, and mm -hmm. they frequently do on the TV news. Yep. We have an angle that we think will interest more people slash sell more copy, blah, blah, blah. So we will do this. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. If you're a self-respecting barbarian, what colour would your hair be? Oh, red. Red. Well, ginger. I tend to mix up my hair colours. Yeah, I tend to but put a, a, a base wasted. colour down and then use different washes to give different effects. Cause I'm, again, oh, you I'm, can't really do that with black and pink and white and blonde. Or the same unit. <laughs> or is your base colour going to be white and then <laughs> you just, just, washes just on put the appropriate contrast, contrast paint on? <laughs> yeah. Trying to think what colour I should do those sashes. I think maybe a blue. Blue and gold's a classic colour combination. It is. Right, I. So these are regular old Thane warriors, aren't they? They are. I got a packet of those somewhere here. It's like he's straight out of White Snake, though. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> I didn't say there was anything wrong with that. Oh. Bleak. 
aged bone. If we're going to rock the 80s, we might as well do it properly. You can tell how organised I was this morning by the state of my wet palette. Oh, that's um, significantly neater than mine. I totally need to change up my uh, everything, you know. Yeah. I've got enough room here to play today, but I'll be changing it later. So did you play a little bit more with those speed paints, or did you give up in disgust? Well, I haven't given up in disgust, but I have... Um... Well, I spent most of yesterday drinking, so <laughs> I've done as much as I would have liked. Speed painting of a different kind. No, none of that, fortunately. Um, I did redo the... <laughs> so, for anyone who's listening, uh, Army Painter Speed Paints, uh, they're good. They go on out of the bottle pretty good but they have this tendency to reactivate. Not dry well, and even an hour or two hours or more, three weeks in some cases, allegedly. Allegedly, mm. yeah. Um, they'll start running and blurring if you try to do anything else to them. Uh, and I found that with some skeletons that I was painting. Uh, I like the bone colour, the pallid bone. It's very good. And High Lord Grey looked pretty good on weapons as well. Um, but I went to put uh, a wash over them and it started lifting the paint off with, uh, yeah, amazing yeah. speed. It was ridiculous. So I uh, took a little bit of water and I just gently brushed them back and washed all the paint off with the brush and refused to touch them until I reprimed them and then I painted them again. Mm. And the four that I did this to, it took about as long to brush the paint off as it did to put it back on. It's very, very quick to, mm. to put on quicker than contrast paints I reckon yeah and the results turn up much quicker so I was thinking about it mm. thinking about the fact that you live in a generally more humid environment than I do oh yes so I'm wondering if there's not a residual amount of moisture in that paint which made it reactivate so much more readily because there's a you know there's a, a range of opinion out there as to how readily it reactivates and what you need yeah. to do to stop it reactivating and all that kind of stuff so I, I just wondered whether the atmospheric conditions may or may not be playing a part well, quite possibly Quite possibly. But I'm yet to get mine, so I'm yet to experiment with this. So I'm living vicariously. Well, I've got another unit of things primed and was going to put some on it today. Right. But you might be going to get some varnish instead. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get the varnish first and then... Mm. Uh, I probably won't have time after that. <laughs> Can you hear the sizzle of cooking bacon? Oh, those are lucky, lucky dogs. Well, the dogs won't be getting that. That'll be Joe's breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I kind of wouldn't mind some breakfast. 
but uh, that's not going to happen. Might have to content myself with a trip to the McDonald's next to the office works. Yeah. Because I don't think anything else is going to be open on a Saturday morning in that particular part of town. That's bizarre. Because... Well, it's right on the... It's not in the CBD. Yeah. It's like a kilometre and a half outside the CBD. So it's just CBD fringe. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's hard... Hard to fathom that when I live in a place where on a Saturday morning everything is open. Like, there's no difference between a weekday and a Saturday morning. Well, you get a lot of that around Brisbane, but this particular area, it's... Despite it being CBD fringe, it's kind of industrial. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you get those areas here too. The thing about them is, is that they're all bloody open up until about 12 or 1 o'clock on a Saturday. It's just like it's a normal day. Then, you know, some of those areas start shutting down. So what you're describing... Excuse me. Hang on. What you're describing oh, yeah. is... Um, Sunday down here. Um. Which is even more amusing when we just spent, you know, two weeks in South Australia slash Kangaroo Island. Because it was like... Now we had to check that things were open before... We um, went and got stuff. That was that was actually one of my biggest shocks in the last few months was I rolled up to Bunnings at 8 o'clock in the evening and they said, no, sorry, we're closed. And I went, you what, 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 what? I went, yeah, yeah, all Bunnings stores <laughs> closed at 7 on a weekday now. And it's just like, wow, when did that happen? It was a COVID thing. They, yeah. they didn't have enough staff. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, Bunnings has been open until 9 p.m. summertime weeknights for years I'm not sure they're open that late up here I wonder well they're only open until 7 down here too so you know office works to um, 7 till 7 um, Bunnings were doing on a weekday Bunnings were doing 6am till 9pm Hmm. Yes, my two nearest Bunnings are currently closed. Oh, yeah, that's because they... They were flooded out a month ago. Flooded out, yeah. Good God, that was a month ago, too. Flushed away. Oh, I'm not going to start singing Tools Anemia. <laughs> Animal. <laughs> Great song. Now you you call it that, you call it that, and I call it Onima. So I don't know. Anima. <laughs> yeah, anima. I, I actually think it's Onima, but I can be completely wrong. I think it's wrong. supposed to be Anima. <laughs> anima. <laughs> no, they, then they should have just stopped it Anima. Flush but, it uh, down. <laughs> Flush it down. Learn to swim. <laughs> I have a suggestion to keep you all occupied. Thank you, Maynard. Thank you, indeed. In general, I don't like that album very much. It's two really? songs off it that I can listen to. Um, What's one, the other one? Uh, 46 and 2. Oh, good choice. I would have said Eulogy, but... Oh, I, don't like, I don't like Eulogy. Um... I don't know why, I just don't like it. Um, the Eye of Von Zarten is just hilarious. 
But it's not it something that I choose to listen to because I want to listen to something. It's That's like a gag track that was f- funny for the first yeah. three times and now I can't be bothered listening to it anymore. What's even funnier is is that I had a conversation with a workmate who was very into heavy metal at the time and he was trying to convince me that Tool were, were um, Nazis and... and Satanist and all kind of stuff because of this particular track, and he played it to me. And I died laughing, and he's like, "I don't see what's funny," and I'm like, "This is a bloody recipe for, for eggs, you idiot." Yep. So it was a well conceived and well executed gag, as far as I'm concerned. But it isn't something that I choose to listen to very often. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the best stuff they did was Lateralis. That's another good album. It's a very, very good album. It's a very, very complete album. There's almost no miss on that album. Again, again, the gag track at the end. Couldn't care less. In fact, I think I'd delete it from my playlist, so I forget that it's on there. Um, Just for the record, mm-hmm. the Eye of Von Zarten is a recipe for hash cookies, not eggs. Yeah, there you go. Well, it does say the eggs of Satan, so... Yeah, but it also says, Unkeiner Eye. Oh, yeah, and no eggs. And no eggs. Yeah, <laughs> no eggs. No, actually, yeah, you're 100% correct, and, and, and I acknowledge my mistake. But the conversation I had yeah. with him at the time was, this is about eggs. Cause... So, <laughs> obviously, I hadn't listened to the lyrics properly at the time. But, um, yeah. Ich spreche sie Deutsch. Yeah. Well, this is the thing, right? You, you, you do a track like that in a foreign language and people make assumptions. Mm. Although interestingly, Just like a Ramstein. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, they're but, pop songs dressed up in heavy metal. But but they're also very very clever because a lot of Ramstein mm. songs mm. have more than one meaning. No, oh, that's true. Uh, Do Hust is a very good example of that. I should get those albums out again at some point. Which get ones? Lost. Oh, the first couple of Ramstein ones. Mm-hmm. They've just released a new one. Mm. It's called Zeit. Well, I admit it's been about 20 years since I've listened to them with any regularity. Right, okay. Or, you know, at all. Yeah, I was on a Ramstein kick for a very, very long time. Yeah, for me, it was called high school. <laughs> it's funny, I discovered them when I was in the Middle East, of all the places. Well, that was about the same time, then. 2002? Yeah, I had just finished high school. Yeah. So, roughly the same amount of time, then. Yeah. And they've done some wonderful stuff since. But, uh, yeah. A very small listening list anyway, and so I tend to burn out on certain albums. Mm. I've only got one album on my phone at the moment, and that's the only thing I'm listening to any music on. Mm-hmm. And it's been there for, oh God, what am I going to date, Sarah? It was 2018, I guess, four years now. Right. <laughs> and it's a bloody good album. Which one? Metrics Fantasies. Right. I don't know it. Metric is one of those wonderful bands that no one outside of Canada has ever heard of. Right. And then they did the soundtrack for Steven Universe or something. 
And then people started liking one song because <laughs> they're even the universe fans. I'm like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> but they're one of those bands that have been around forever and yeah, it's all very good. It'd be like me it'd be like me with kidney thieves. <laughs> I'll take your word on that mm. because I've never heard of them. Right. Uh, it's the Unless same we're thing. talking about what's going on in bathtubs for us. <laughs> oh, I think that's maybe where they got the name from because they were sort well, of around yeah. about the turn of the century when they put that act together. And um, they ran for a solid 10 or 12 years and then they sort of went and did other stuff. But, um Free Domingos is working on a new album at the moment, but uh, COVID is obviously slowing everything down. Slowing everything down. So. One of the things that I was just listening to, you know, a random sort of a thing being suggested by Spotify when I was sitting in that cramped little room in the little flat in. Ringwood when we were in transition between previous house and this house and one track played and I'm like my ears pricked up and went oh what's that and went back and listened to it a couple of times and then went back and listened to it a couple more times and then went this is really good and went searching for the artist and one of the things that really interested me was is that on a couple of the tracks her vocals resemble Kate Bush and back in the day I adored Kate Bush don't so, blame you um, it got me hooked and so there's a, a playlist on Spotify that's got a fair degree of their stuff in it and I will listen to that on random from time to time while I'm walking around the suburbs towing the dogs or by myself so, yeah I've got cloud bursting stuck in my head. Great song. Yes. Shout out to Donald Sutherland. All the big shout outs here today. Absolutely. Actually, I'd forgotten that he was in that film clip until I saw it again not that long ago. It's like, oh yeah, I remember. She had the short hair and... <laughs> yeah, as a teenager, everybody else was listening to Poison and... Bon Jovi and Michael Jackson and whatever, and I'm squirreled away in my bedroom working my way through Kate Bush. It was an odd little child turned into an odd little man really well not so little is that what you're saying yeah <laughs> that really eclectic possibly even still Maybe not. Maybe I'm over-crediting myself. You know, you've got Ramstein backed up by Metallica, backed up by Tool, backed up by Kate Bush, backed up by Green Clearwater Revival, backed up by... <coughs> Gee, there was a bit of Michael Bublé there for a little while, but I sort of grew out of that. Just... Strange shit. Well, oh, I um, wouldn't say um, any of those are strange in combination or... Nora well, aside Jones. from Booblay, but... Booblay, you know. <laughs> Nora Jones. No, that's fine. Yeah. Nora Jones.
Willow's back outside, obviously. There's just plenty of whining going on outside the window. Well, I can't hear a single bit of it. Oh, aren't you lucky? What are your plans for the weekend? Well, after ducking off to office works, uh, I'll probably get back just in time to go out with Andrea, and then that'll be today done. Yeah. And then Sunday, I plan on not doing very much. I might uh, do some painting. There you go. Well, that's definitely what I have planned. All right. And then Monday will probably be the same. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Right. I haven't mentioned it to you because we haven't had a chat since then, but last Tuesday, my mm. boss decided to publicly humiliate me in oh. a mass text message Really? to all the staff. So I'm just taking some time off instead of me saying, you know what, I don't need your job, go to hell. Right, so you've just taken some time off. Hmm. Was there a... A reason for this humiliation, or was it just... Uh, petty bullshit? Uh, I would call it petty bullshit. I don't think she would see it that same way. Right. But basically, turning people away because they're bringing in rubbish is generating complaints. Right. Because some people just want to be awful so was this a reaction to the guy with the dumpster no no right although i would say that's probably part of it yeah so basically what she sent a text message out going don't turn anything away yeah greet people with a smile and there have been lots of complaints not one but not two not three but six complaints and where and i'm getting trouble from my boss about it and i'm like i don't i really don't care not at 8 45 at night right on tuesday yeah and the fact that you've been off with covid you haven't been in the store hmm. you don't know what's actually going on yes and so it got my back up a fair bit no oh, i can imagine so I uh, had a word to one of the managers and said, look, I'm bloody annoyed by this. Yeah. As he knew that I would be. I'm going to take some time off. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks just to calm down. I'll be back eventually, but right now I don't give a shit. Yeah. I really don't care. Yeah. I see. And so I'm going to do that. <laughs> I think that's a damn good plan. That's better than throwing your toys out of the bram and stomping off because then you would mm. have to find somewhere else to... Yeah. But, but yeah, like I, like I completely appreciate that that kind of thing is demoralising. Oh, extremely. And I mean been down on staff anyway mm -hmm. recently and the boss has not handled a lot of issues very well nope. um, deciding that she wants to change the direction of the store away from uh, brick or brack so mm. crockery and cutlery and things that aren't clothing <laughs> right uh, and then proceeding to throw out you know all of one person's work, just throw it all in the skip. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the only thing that person did was select quality merchandise and price it accordingly and yeah. put it out for sale and just got rid of all of their work. Right. All of it. Yeah. And that was demoralizing. And she's had three weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> Don't blame her. No, not at all. And yeah, I'm. I. I nearly really cracked the shits. Mm. Like, 
in a big way. I'm yeah. Not, no, I'll just take some time off. Yep. I'll still keep in touch with one of the managers because we have beers every now and then. And... Mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of people are really annoyed. Mm. You, don't, you don't treat your staff like crap if you want them to keep turning up. You don't dehumanize them or demoralize them or publicly humiliate them mm -hmm. in front of everyone else. Nope. And I think that's the message that the boss doesn't really understand. You might be the boss, but you're not the one doing the work. Mm -hmm. So I understand that it's been a minor disaster there the last couple of days without me. So I think I'm going to give them a couple of weeks where I'm just not there and yep. they can learn a lesson about why you should turn away rubbish instead of just accepting it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then hopefully you'll end up in a position where you are appreciated. <sighs> hopefully. And, a, and an apology and yeah. even just saying, you know what? You were right to do this. That'd be nice. I fear, and I don't know this particular person, but given the actions that you've described, I fear that what will end up happening is that you will go back and you will get blamed for the schmozzle. So, well, you can't see, very well blame me for taking stuff that I wasn't there for. No, this is true, but, you know, the fact that everybody else w will struggle because you're not there, and obviously you contribute to the running of the place significantly, those, those struggles and complaints will get dropped at your feet. Well, I've got two words to say to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, keep on trucking. I've got, I've got four other words as well. Uh -huh. I don't need you. You need me. Uh -huh. Okay, that was five words, whatever. Well, you know, off by one errors. But yeah, like, it sounds to me like She's been promoted to the level of incompetence, which is a natural thing. The funny thing about the way these op shops work is that everyone who shows up to work has got their own little special, special interest area and yep. special thing that they only want to do. Yeah. And it's very, very hard to get someone who's willing to sift crap. Yeah. And I mean, that's not what I started off doing there. I started off doing online, online orders to the online web store. Right. And it was only because they had literally no one else that I got thrown into the back room and I found I had a talent for it. Mm -hmm. For dealing with people. And for uh, dealing with the problems of other people because, God... <laughs> most pe most people there, if they've got a problem, they come to me, right. be it as a customer or as another staff member with a problem, because yeah. the management is extremely hard to get hold of during the working day. Right. They're either busy trying to run an online web store and failing, mm -hmm. or they're having a girls' talk, yak, 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 right. or they're so busy run off their feet trying to cover every, everyone else that, you know, there's no time for them. Mm -hmm. And so as the biggest person there, most people come to me with their problems. Oh, can you do this? Can you sort out this problem? Here, answer the phone. I've got this person on the phone who's got no idea what's going on and they need help. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. And so I... <laughs> yeah. Yep couple of weeks away from the place will make them appreciate me, I think. Yeah, I hope. I hope it works out that way. You know? yeah. and, if, and if it doesn't, it's a very good indicator that it's not a place to be. Exactly.
What I think is really, really funny about the timing of it is that the only other big bloke there finished right on the same day that <laughs> the boss decided to publicly humiliate me. Mm. And we're mates, and we also have beers together. Yeah. Um, and he's not the volunteering type. He was only there because he was forced to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a born shovel leaner. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Eh? Yeah. So, if they think that they're going to be able to transfer another person into that position, well, mm. all they've got left are 60 year old ladies. Good luck with the couches. Exactly. It's interesting. Some months ago, there was an article came round in an email at work about how the more successful people in life are the ones that are able to say no. I've been very good at saying no. <laughs> Not that successful. No. Well, obviously there's degrees and, and qualifications involved course, in all of, of that course. but but that just that ability this is one of my primary complaints with where i'm working at the moment is is that we my particular section of the organization has no ability to say no they say yes to everybody and fail everybody because we don't have the capacity to do what we've said yes to do We've yeah. got, I did a count yesterday, we've got 11 competing priorities for the next body of work. And we've got four people to do the implementation. So, at least, you could figure from that at least seven of those aren't going to get done. So, as far as I'm concerned, we just go back to the, the, the people that are involved in those seven things and say, sorry, can't do it. But that's not going to happen, is it's it? It's not going to happen. So it'll be, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. Or, or you know, they actually make a commitment and then it's like it'll get stirred into the product backlog for the next release and it'll sink to the bottom of said product backlog and then it'll get quote simplified unquote out because we've hit our project deadline and there's no time to put it in so it's they're not saying no but they're not going to get it either and my problem with that is is that if you set expectations with somebody, the worst thing that you can do is to break that expectation. So what you need to do is you need to set the expectation of what is the most likely outcome, which is, sorry, we're not going to get around to this. Because if you tell them up front, we're not going to get to it, then they can make different plans. Or a negotiation can go on and a priority can be changed. But they don't do that. They just say, yeah, we'll get to it. Maybe. Maybe. And so, you know, it comes time for release and they go, cool, it's release time. Where's my stuff? And we go, yeah, sorry, didn't get to it. They're pissed off. Because the expectation is that they're going to get it. You know? And they don't. Whereas if the expectation was, well, they're not going to get it because these people are too busy, then they make different plans and, you know, things move on. So. Yeah. I think, you know, from, from my perspective, where you are, I think the expectation 
should be set with people that if you're donating crap, we're not going to accept it. And and if that expectation is set and it's you know it's written on the written on the web page and it's on a notice at the door and all this kind of stuff going, you know, we reserve the right to reject your donations based on the quality or the, you know, the contents of them, then people are going to be far more accepting of the fact that you've said no because you've set the expectation that you can say no. Yeah, but we're not allowed to say no. (laughs) That was made extremely clear. We're not allowed to say no. We'll have to accept a literal bag of literal rubbish. Rubbish, if yeah. It's so, offered to us. So, so somebody, somebody can give you the the container full of kitchen refuse containing mm. peelings and all that kind of stuff, and you just have to smile and go, "Well, thank you for your donation." That is the expectation that has been set by the management. Now, here you go. Instead of you know being clever and being picky and only taking that which is saleable mm-hmm. and not putting the rest in general landfill. Yes. Or even offering an altern- alternate uh, charity to go to because they're more willing to take shit mm-hmm. because they directly aid people who directly need it instead mm-hmm. of, yeah. you know, affluent people from the rich suburbs coming in looking for a bargain and trying to make themselves feel like they're doing something good mm. because yeah, that yeah. is that is the store's general clientele it's yeah. 60 plus affluent white women doctors wives mm. from the rich suburbs just on the other side of the river from the store yeah. and a good half of the store's floor space is dedicated to rich people clothes. Yeah. <laughs> and a quarter of the store is dedicated to regular people clothes. You know, floor space wise. And yeah. Both racks wise, it's literally half of the store is dedicated to boutique stuff, expensive brands, nice looking stuff for affluent, wealthy white women who have mm-hmm. got nothing better to do during yeah. their day. Yeah. And so, yeah, if someone hands me a bag of rubbish, I'm gonna just going to say, well, quite frankly, we don't need this stuff at this store. Mm. Would you consider donating it somewhere else? Because that's what I do when I say no. I say, this isn't really our sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah, you come into the store, you know what we sell. I've seen you here every bloody week for the last several months. Mm-hmm. You know what we sell. Why are you giving us this stuff? We don't sell it here. They need to make room for more rich clothes. Well, exactly. We've downsized our toy section to virtually nothing. So that we can... And we've taken out the the expensive menswear section for ex, more expensive women's wear. Mm-hmm. That disappoints me greatly. Yeah. Not that we get much menswear, but, you know. No, no. It was the toys that I was disappointed about. I didn't care Look, about menswear. Uh, the only toys we sell are basically to doctors' wives with dogs. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the, the only toys that sell are stuffed toys. Yeah. That can be ripped apart by these dogs. Yeah. For two and three bucks. Yeah. And so I'm always disappointed when someone drops off their, you know, expensive curated teddy bear collection. <laughs> Because these just, teddy bears, if I put them out for sale, they're just going to get ripped apart by dogs. Mm-hmm. Because that's the type of people we sell to. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Hmm. Disappointing. Frankly, we need a poor people's store as well as a rich person's store and just have separate stores. Yeah. There's a there's an uncomfortable degree of hypocrisy going on there, isn't there? Yeah. What was that comment we made the other night about faith based <laughs> activities? Yep. Moving on. 
<laughs> for any, having to write one disclaimer. <laughs> hey, I wear pink shirts from time to time. Oh, yeah. I am pink. Therefore, my opinion doesn't count. Hey, speaking of which, did you end up getting through the Abercrombies? I am the last quarter or so of best served cold. Oh, <laughs> right. So I got through the first trilogy, yeah. and I enjoyed it quite yep. a lot. And I'm enjoying best served cold. Yep. I I didn't think that I would enjoy best served cold from the way it started off. Yeah. But you know, friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I like friendly. Yeah, absolutely. I like practical frost as well. Like they're basically the same character, except one is mute and the other isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Four hundred and thirty-two. Yep. Uh, so if they keep putting characters like that in, then um, I'm oh, going to yeah. enjoy the rest of the books. Yeah. I like the Mercado character. Um, the, the one that made me really uncomfortable was uh, the trajectory of Call Shivers. That that was like, oh boy, this is not going well. <laughs> well, spoilers, that's what happens when you get your eye burnt out. Mm. And he keeps turning up, so it, it's good fun. I'm not going to say when and where, but it's good fun. Oh, does he become another bloody nine? No. Because he seemed like he was going that way in one of his last bits of action that I read. Wait, hey, actually, he, he he does turn out to be not a very nice fellow, but it's okay because it's relatable. You understand why he's not a very nice fellow. Mm. Um Yeah, there, there's some there's some classic dialogue in that. So what's after Best Surf Cold is the the heroes. The heroes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's really interesting because it's a it's a whole novel that's based sort of around about three or four days. It's very, mm. it's very different from the other ones. It's very good. I love his stuff. I really need to get back to the current trilogy. Just remembered to co-locate the uh, Age of Madness trilogy with the uh, the rest of the books of the First Law, mm. so that I can find them all in one place instead of having them in separate folders in separate locations. Yeah. So far, I've only listened to the first one of Age of Madness. A little hatred. A little hatred. Uh, the blurb with the the back of um, the trouble with peace, the second one, spoiled mm. kind of the end of the third book for me. I was like, oh. San Dan Glockter has a daughter. <laughs> I wonder who that could have been with. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait a minute. He's going to end up with Artie West. Hmm. Oh, look. Here he is proposing marriage to Artie West after Giselle 
becomes king. Mm-hmm. Sorry for spoilers, not sorry. If you're listening to this, you should have listened to these books already or read them. <laughs> <laughs> for a decade. <laughs> that whole scene where he's fumbling in his pocket for that, that sharp object yeah. and he's just like, oh, God, no, no, oh, no. Oh. And then it, the way it turns out, it's like, oh. It's a ring. <laughs> it's a ring. Yes. Oh. Oh, and the follow-up conversation with the the Lord Chamberlain. Yeah, I th- I told you to deal with that woman. I did deal with her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's my wife. Ah <laughs> uh, no, you, you you obviously caught my um caught my comment on the photo you posted to the Facebook group. I did. Jab, jab. Jab, jab. I should totally go back and do that guy's eyes pink. Yep. Absolutely. But then it brings me back to South Park and pink eye and <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah I wasn't going there what started all of this was you said pink shirt and the first thing that leapt into my head was pharaoh Maljin hmm. <laughs> not a character I normally associate with pink no just the way she used to use the, the yeah. racial the reverse racial slur yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, that scene in the the, <laughs> the Lord's Round where Bias is presenting just held down with her. <laughs> She's cackling away up in the gallery. <laughs> Uh, the way he describes that is just gold. There's some very, very funny moments in that trilogy. Mm. And how Pike goes to kill Glockter and Glockter ends up offering him a job. Which you accept? <laughs> Would you like a job? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that little twist coming. That Pike was the first guy that he sent off in the book. Yeah, it was all nicely done. I thought. Yeah, I mean, when Salem Pike Roots. got in bed with um, yeah. Like, when Pike got into bed with Buddy West, yeah, he made it sound as though he'd been there for years and years and years, not six months. Mm. And so that's why I wasn't expecting it. That might just be my faulty memory, but... Oh, no, yeah. it, was, it, it absolutely came as a surprise to me the first time I read it. I was like, oh! I wonder how much... You know, foreshadow like how much of that those twists were planned out that far ahead. I don't know. Yeah, because you know. Yeah. Anyway, he might have. What I really enjoyed was the fact that he he actually painted the, the all powerful wizard as the all powerful wizard. It's like, he isn't there for benevolent reasons. He isn't there for anybody else. He's there because he's a power-hungry maniac. And he's making sure that he's consolidating his power.
Yes, fires being behind everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the banking house of Valentin Bulk. Doctor walks into his little room, sees Bias sitting in the chair. Am I in the presence of Fallant or Bulk? And then the bank heist that goes wrong. <laughs> Seth Cold <laughs> Carnage the inches. Oh dear, oh dear Well he had to make sure he got his man Absolutely Yes Morvi is a strange little man Paranoid Yep Well Even paranoids have enemies uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> You're only three quarters away through aren't you yeah, I yeah. mean, he's already killed Day, but, you know, not that far into it. I, right. I think it's part six that I'm up to. Yeah. I don't remember the exact sequencing, so I'll just keep my mouth shut. Don't want to spoil it. Um, Koska's back in command of the Thousand Swords. <laughs> um, he's another God, character like that, that just keeps cropping up. He keeps cropping up and cropping up and cropping up. I'm half expecting Koska to actually be Yoru's Sulfa. <laughs> Yoru's Sulfa. Yeah, no, his eyes aren't mismatched, so. Yeah, but, you know, Flesh Eater, Shape Changer, because really, really took pains to show that Koska had died. You know, they... He killed off Koska, and then he's brought him back 50 pages later. I'm like, hmm. Yes, thank you again for the recommendation. Yeah, so, I'm glad you like them because you yeah. know, like I've recommended them to people before and have had not so flattering um, responses. So I can see how they wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea. Sure enough. A story where the torturer is the hero? Yes. It's that moral ambiguity, I think, that actually makes them. Yeah, I mean, it'd be boring if it was standard good versus evil stuff. Mm-hmm. I like Guy Ritchie movies where everyone's a bastard. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's my sort of twist. I don't need heroes. I like it when everyone is a bastard. I like it. Yeah, I, I like it when everybody's a, a flawed character. George Martin manages to do that too, I think. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever pick up those books or ever get back to that particular show. Hmm. I don't think he's ever going to finish it, so... 
<laughs> too busy making money writing video games now. Yeah. There's plenty of distractions. Too busy making money off TV shows with his name on it. Mm. It was really hilarious. It, it becomes he's... Tom Clancy. <laughs> yeah, he started writing the novels as an antidote to the fact that he was writing TV scripts. I didn't actually know that. Yeah, he's been a screenwriter forever. He's done all sorts of stuff. Twilight Zone and Beauty and the Beast and like lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. He's been a writer his entire life. And he wanted to write something where he could get away with it from the constraints of a 45-minute episode or a 30-minute episode or whatever, right? So he set out to write something that couldn't possibly be filmed for television. <laughs> Which ended up one of the biggest TV shows in history. <laughs> so, just goes to show you. Speaking of things that have been written that can't be filmed in television, have you tried your hand at the Foundation TV series? No, not yet. <laughs> All I've right. had mixed reports about it, so. You watched it? I watched the first episode and I threw my hands up in the air. Right, okay. Because no. 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 Right. <laughs> well, I tried The Wheel of Time and I got 18 minutes into that and turned it off. Yeah, don't blame you. I've heard similar from just about everyone else who was a fan of the books. Well, I've never read them, so... I got to book six and gave up and discussed. It's like, this isn't going anywhere. Like, you've taken the idea for a trilogy and you're now extending it out over 12 books and it doesn't work. I'm bored. You know, and there's there's something to be said for characters who are conflicted and, you know, ambiguous as far as their intentions are concerned and you know, their moral pathways and all that kind of stuff. I like characters like that. But characters that are just unlikable, I can't deal with. You know, you have to be able to relate to these people. And this is why I couldn't read Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. I just couldn't stand the character. Couldn't couldn't deal with him. Couldn't relate to him. So that may be my loss. No, probably not. It's why I couldn't watch the show Weeds. Because the yeah, lead character just drove me watch. nuts. Hmm? Oh, I haven't watched that either. Mm. Oh, suburban housewife copes with the death of her husband by growing dope and selling it locally. You know, it's like uh, Breaking Bad Light. Yeah. But it, I think it predated Breaking Bad, so... Yeah, lead character, just completely unlikable. from my perspective. I think that's fair enough. If you're going to want to wrap yourself up in a TV show, you might as well enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the time, Eddie? Uh, quarter to the hour. Right. To the second hour. So I guess that's coming up on 10 for you. Mm-hmm. Is it Sunday that you change your times again? Tonight. Yeah. Tonight, yeah. So next live stream will actually be 8 o'clock for you, as opposed to mm. 7. Sleeping in. Ah, the joys of time zones. I've been late to the last few 
intercept uh, weekly meetings because I hadn't realised that those guys had gone on to summertime. Yeah, well, that was a problem I had with uh, recording um, this week as well. They didn't tell me that they'd gone on to summertime. And, right. Uh, my 10 o'clock was uh, 9 o'clock and I was happening to be doing grocery shopping. And right. A message came through, hey, where are you? Are we doing this today? And I said, yeah, you're early. <laughs> mm. You're really early. Uh, no. Oh, if you change your times again, like silly people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, it's just a delivery guy. I am expecting Clee to drop in today. Finally sick of his waterlogged home. Uh, uh, he's been down, he's taken a couple of weeks off work and he's been down helping his brother move house. But, uh, I think he goes home tomorrow, so... Just dropping in for a few hours this afternoon to catch up. Got a couple of things here for him. He's bringing a couple of things for me. I just... Well, that'll be good. Say good day to him for me. I will. Definitely starting to feel the hunger pangs. Yeah, me too. I haven't had any visitors today at all in the chat, have we? Not today. Not today. Were you expecting someone? No. Not really. If this this only ever stays a sort of a hangout between you, me, and you know a couple of other random droppers from time to time, I'm okay with that. Fair enough. I'm okay with it too. I was watching a podcast guy streaming on Twitch was doing an interview with another miniature painter and they were talking about Twitch and they were talking about the stress of Twitch and different things that happen on Twitch and I'm like, wow, none of that's ever happened to me. None of it's ever likely to happen to me. You know, they were, they were talking about how every now and again somebody with a, a set of followers in a Twitch stream when their Twitch stream finishes, they encourage everybody that's in that that's watching that Twitch stream to switch to a different Twitch stream. Um, I think they use the term raid, mm -hmm. whereas you know all of a sudden you know you, you you're doing something on Twitch and all of a sudden a hundred people drop into the channel. It's like, well, that's never likely to happen to me. It'd be interesting. Funny thing about raids is that no one sticks around for more than 30 seconds. Yeah, right. They sort of drop in and go, oh, I don't really want to be here. Oh, they just want to be part of the moment. Oh, okay. Flash mob. Basically, that's what it is. Flash mob. Mm. As opposed to a flash mob, which is an entirely non-safe for discussion subject. Oh, yeah. Good fun, though. <laughs> Take your word for it. I'm up to the sashes. But I think I'm out of time. Ten minutes. Yeah, 
Well, I can try. Not that many of them wearing sashes, are they? Oh, it's only half. So how much variation in these guys? Is it two or three different poses? There's three different poses here. There's uh, two, two primary poses in the leader. So those skeletons I was testing the speed paints out on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I sorted them into columns based on the pose. And mm -hmm. I had three columns. Because I thought there were three different poses. Right. Turns out I was looking at the back for a quarter of them. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the front, it was the back And that's why it was different <laughs> There's only two different poses <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Eyes in the back of my head Well If you've got a hole in the back of your skull As a skeleton, technically I don't know. How many of those have I missed? Damn. Not going to get to Sasha's too busy fixing up things I've missed. Fair enough. Like, I haven't done his belt buckle. I haven't done his belt buckle. Goodness me. Yeah, I was a bit like that with these skeletons. Oh, look, I missed a hand. I missed a hand. I missed a finger. I missed a hand. Mm. Which is annoying with those speed paints because they do dry out fairly quickly. Yeah, it sounds to me like dropping them on a wet palette's the right thing to do. Well, apparently they go right through wet palettes. Yeah, really? Mm. Yeah, that could be bad. They recommend hard palettes. Okay. And so I've got these um, these old uh, paint mixing trays. Yeah. That are rusty steel. <laughs> They're definitely not uh, a suitable material or medium, so maybe I'll have to look at Officeworks and see what they've got. I went to an art supply place. Sorry about hammering the ca camera, everybody. I went to an art supply place and got one of those ceramic oh uh, yeah that's a good idea ceramic the other thing you can do sorry about hammering the camera again is um uh go to a tile place and get a 10 by 10 centimeter white ceramic tile um where is my tile got a tile around here somewhere it's just too big it's a subway style tile and it takes up too much room so you know it's sort of a, an eight centimeter by eight centimeter or a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter would have been a lot better um but yeah like the glaze surface is a, it's a good surface easy to clean nothing soaks into it etc etc one recommendation I did see was the uh, Coke bottle cap. Right. Hmm. Not that I've got any of those lying around, but... Mm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm still enthused for the speed paints, despite that... Um, reactivation setback but yeah a bit of caution I think how yeah, long does it, um, this spray varnish take to dry well depending on atmospheric conditions somewhere between 20 and 40 seconds and that's to a point where I could go over it with highlights oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's yeah. not too bad. When I when I finalise these miniatures, I do three coats, um, and it's in the spray booth outside in the workshop, obviously because they smell. Um, yeah, I haven't really considered a place where it would be okay for me to spray because there's not really a place where it's okay for me to spray here. 
Right. Um, it's going to be awkward. Hmm. You were going downstairs into the garagey sort of area, weren't you? Yeah, I'm sitting in the garage. Right. With, uh, my painting table. Yeah. The thing about well, okay, the the fumes from those varnishes are not ob as obnoxious as they the fumes from the like the rattle can paints you get from Bunnings. Mm. It's not that bad, but they definitely do have an odor. So it's not acrylic. It's a. I'm not sure what the repellent is. How long have I got? Four minutes. I think they're uh, solvent based, from what I remember yeah. reading. Them. Yeah, and and this is Which why. Which I'd be slightly worried about using them on acrylic paints. No. No. I've been I mean, using, I, I trust using, you in yeah. that you say that they're fine. And uh, I hope that they'll go well on the speed paint because yeah. it's something else again, I, yeah. I guess. It, it, yeah. Uh, virtually every miniature that's in my miniatures cabinets has been coated with that Mikador stuff. It's fine. And, and lots of them have had paint applied on top of it and it's fine. It, it cool. works quite well. So. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Hmm. Well, here we are. Barbarians. Good enough to put on the table. Yes. They'll need a couple of hours more work. That was one of the other things about that podcast that I was listening to. This this woman was a commission painter, and she was painting, uh, I, th I think they were 40K or, or Age Sigma miniatures or something like that, but 80 hours on a single miniature for a commission. 80 hours. Well, I hope she was charging like a thousand bucks a pop. Uh, I, I, look, I imagine that the commission rates are uh, commensurate with her skill level and she's pretty damn good. So, you know, I, I do truly hope that she's making a, a, a reasonable amount of money out of that kind of effort. But I, 80, I, hours. 80, 80 hours for me... That's 40 miniatures mm. because I don't have time to be spending 80 hours on one miniature. I mean, I'm not going to spend 80 hours on that damned Bane Blade. Like, that's going to be eight hours tops. Hey, spray, can, spray cans and stencils. <laughs> you got it. Spray can, stencil, details, decals, done. Oh, there'll be a wash in there somewhere, but you know what I mean. It, mm -hmm. It's... And I, oh, this is well, part of why I was so down early in the week is, is like, you know, I'm looking at some of these miniatures and I'm like, you know, I'd like to, to get to a better level. And then it's like, well, do I really? Like, as a part of shifting the miniatures around in the cabinet, I shifted my Roman army again. It's now yeah. sitting slightly higher up, so it's slightly more visible. There's 430 figures in that army. Mm. And it took you, what, a year? Seven months. There was a couple of other projects that were run at the same time, but, but yeah, seven, seven months, 430 figure, 28 millimetre Roman army. If I was doing 80 hours of bloody figure... <laughs> You'd still be going on. <laughs> I'd be painting Romans for the rest of my life. <laughs> So it's a, I've just got to acknowledge that I'm doing different things. Like there's just as much wow factor in the 400 figures of that army as there is in a single golden demon miniature. And more power to the people that are painting the golden demon stuff. I love your work. It's inspiring. But I just have to acknowledge that it isn't what I'm doing. And. Oh. Yeah. No, you've got a lot more quantities to deal with. Yeah, and as uh, uh, Russian Second World War proverb, quantity has a quality all of its own. Mm -hmm. oh, I think they were referring to artillery, but but you know what I mean. Well, that or manpower. Yeah, well, both, really. <laughs> you get the rifle, 
the guy behind you gets the ammunition. Yeah, that's right. Well, if one of you is full, pick up the other. Yeah. Well, oh, dear. You hear the guy running behind gets the ammunition, so he picks up the rifle of the guy that dies in front of him. That's, um, it's very sad. Yeah, that's probably what's going on today. Yeah, I would have thought so, to, to some degree. On that so, note... Like Ukrainian state media. Hmm... We're not going to learn the full story for this for a long time. Ever, probably. Possibly not ever. I mean, the fact that they're still learning stuff about the Second World War is very telling, I think. Mm. You know, a war that was cast as very black and white turned out not so funny. But that's discussion for another day. Hmm. Guy down the street's got his Mustang out. Good for him. Good for him. It's raining. He'll have to wash it. <laughs> have a damn uh, fine weekend, Matty. Same to you, Dan. Oh, Enjoy um, everything that comes your way. Yes. Even if you can't. <laughs> I shall try. Good stuff. Talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you later.